All right, folks, now as a result of doing a combination of both airsoft stuff and firearm stuff here on the channel, on the social media in general, and going to the SHOT Show for the last few years, ended up with a lot of friends in the States. They shoot firearms and they want to get themselves an airsoft gun so they can practice in their house using cheap ammo, just practicing sight alignment, reloads, blah, blah, blah. There's not a lot of airsoft brands that I recommend to them because not a lot of the airsoft brands manufacture stuff to anywhere near the quality that they're going to be used to with their uh, Colt, BCM, KAC, uh, whatever rifles and all the real parts, real aim points, real handguards, SLR, Geisley, whatever. One brand I've used since they started is PTS. Used to be Magpul PTS. I've st still got some of their original Gen 1 P mags, replicas thereof. Bought those pretty much back when they originally came out quite a long time ago now. What I want to cover today is some of the muzzle devices and one particular model of suppressor, silencer replica from PTS. We'll look at some of their Griffin armament stuff, properly, officially, pucker, legit licensed, however you want to phrase it. So we've got the M4 SDK. At the moment they do the SDK, slightly longer SD. They do each version in black and tan. And they do a wide range of Griffin armament muzzle devices. You've got comps, brakes, flash hiders, and mixtures in between thereof makes no difference in airsoft whatever you like the look of the thing for me is the quality i've tried a dozen different brands over the years probably more of airsoft muzzle devices consistently the ones i've only ever found to be of a high quality are the ones from pts uh, like this hammer comp that i've got on here now as you can see on this particular one the inner barrel protrudes into the muzzle device so that's uh, one situation some people like to add a suppressor but to give you an example here, this is a really old G&P AEG that I've had at least six, probably more years. So that's got one of the earlier Griffin licensed flash hiders on it. Now recently PTS came out with a new line of muzzle devices from Griffin licensed uh, replicas. Um, they made some quite a long time ago, a few different models. This is one of their, that first generation. The new line are specifically designed and authorized, mentioned as it were, to work with the PTS replicas of the Griffin suppressors. However, if I line this new suppressor up with this older muzzle device, clicks in, fits absolutely perfectly. The fit and tolerances on these things are just um, above and beyond miles ahead of what you get from most airsoft companies. Why are they so good? Pretty simple, the materials they use, the finishes they apply to those materials and the general standards of the machine work. If we talk about the muzzle devices, these Griffin ones are made of number 45 steel, which if you Google, you'll find is a very high quality carbon steel around, I think 0.5% carbon in there, often used for axial applications in mechanical systems then the finish is what's known as qpq you might hear that referred to as tenifer or melanite various other things in if you follow various firearms channels basically it's all the same thing it stands for quench polish quench it's a nitro carburizing process it's incredibly hard wearing they use it on real firearms all the time in all sorts of ways and pts use that on their airsoft accessories. On the suppressor front, it's a 6061 aluminium alloy, really light. Most airsoft stuff is made of what's referred to as pot metal, Zamac. It is a sort of an aluminium alloy. Uh, basically, they chuck whatever cheap crap some guy in a depot in China has into a great big melting pot, stir it all up, uh, and it's um, generally when it's actually cooled into an end product, it's full of air bubbles. Incredibly brittle, weak, doesn't polish, doesn't machine. It, it's good for making stuff cheaply. It's got a very low melting point, but it's simply not a high quality of metal in general. So, as I say, 6061 here, 
on rolling, some B-roll of all the uh, officially licensed markings and stuff like that. Got for airsoft use only on there, but it's very small laser etched, uh, which is a good thing. You can just, I tend to just position that at the six o'clock when it's mounted. This is a US version of the SDK. So there's nothing in terms of foam to act as baffles down the center of it. So suppression effect will be probably none pretty much. Uh, it's just an aesthetic thing for people who want to practice uh, and have their replica handle the exact same way their real firearm does and their real firearm uses a suppressor silencer obviously weight will be a bit less but that's a plus if you are just skirmishing and you just want to look but obviously size bulk spot on and weight weight isn't too far off the mounting system on this particular model is brilliant unlike the old AAC 51T system which is completely proprietary in terms of muzzle devices that the suppressor will mount onto these griffin cans uh, basically interface with an A2 style of muzzle device so if he's got if you see these two rings at the base of the muzzle device it's pretty much going to go on there obviously the PTS ones are compatible the newest most recent releases that are specifically designed to work with the cans will of course work the the fit is so good that when you try and remove the can it almost feels like there's an air pressure the tolerances are that tight uh, as I showed earlier the gen ones will work pick up my old ACR AEG here this has got just a A2 birdcage style muzzle device on it. I have no idea what brand, it's not PTS, but if I just take a second to line this up. Now, sometimes with other brands of muzzle device, what you'll get is the sprung steel catch on the locking mechanism here won't fully engage. However, It's never ever going anywhere. You can shake this about all you like. Uh, it's it's never coming off the gun. That is for sure. Until you really pull on it. Very, very tight tolerances. Um, obviously no guarantees it'll work with every single brand, but I've tried quite a few. If I've got it here, actually. Uh, this is a random old, GMP replica of a KAC triple tap brake. Completely different manufacturers, brands, everything. But if I put this in, line it up, and that's locked in. Um, PTS just done a sweet job on, on building these suppressors. Pretty much anything PTS makes, handguards, pistol grips, stocks, fall grips, suppressors, muzzle devices, uh, selectors in particular, I'm a fan of myself. They just build it so much closer to the quality of the real thing than almost any other brand in airsoft, which is why I've been using them so long. You know, full disclosure on this one, they sent me this can and uh, this Griffin replica muzzle, uh, muzzle device here. So yeah, you know, if you think I'm biased, you think I'm biased, but I was gonna buy this stuff anyway because this is what I use. I've been using all their stuff for years and anyone who's followed me since I've been doing all this social media jazz will, uh, will know about that. So yeah, just just a wholehearted recommendation for me, folks. The quality's there, whether it's just for airsoft or you want to replicate a real firearm. When you're talking about this stuff that goes on the end of the rifle, PTS all the way for me personally, having tried the alternatives. All the usual expected social media links will be down in the description. Check those out if you so desire. It would be appreciated, that's for sure. Appreciate you watching the video, guys. Uh, subscribe if you haven't. Tune in for the next one, and I'll see you then.